So previously we've considered the gravitational potential energy close to the surface of the Earth. But let's now consider astronomical distances. So in astronomical distances we're going to need to use Newton's law of universal gravitation, F is equal to gmm on r squared, to describe the gravitational force. So when we were considering the gravitational potential energy close to the surface of the Earth, we said, well, the change in the gravitational potential energy is given by the negative of the work done. And the work done can be calculated by integrating the force over the path. So this is given by the equation, the integral of f of r dr. And close to the surface of the Earth, we could assume that that gravitational force was constant, that it was given by mg. And so when we integrated this, taking the gravitational potential energy at the surface of the Earth to be zero, we came up with the equation u is equal to mgh. So let's now consider a large mass, say a planet with a mass capital M, and a smaller mass, say a satellite with a mass little m, which is a distance capital R away from that planet. Now if we want to calculate the gravitational potential energy, we're going to need to choose our zero point for the gravitational potential energy. And by convention, we take that the gravitational potential energy is zero when there's an infinite distance between two masses. So what we're going to consider doing is moving the object from an infinite distance away where it's got zero gravitational potential energy to that distance capital R away from the mass capital M. So we can use our equations to write, well, the change in the potential energy is going to be equal to negative the work done, which is going to be equal to negative the integral of the gravitational force times the ds over the path. Now, in this equation, the gravitational force, that is directed towards the center of mass of the large planet, the capital M mass when we're considering that gravitational force acting upon the smaller mass, the satellite. And the path, ds, that's defined as moving away from the planet. And so these two are in opposite directions. So when we take the dot product of those, we're going to end up with a negative sign. So we can write this equation as well. The change in potential energy is equal to the integral over our path. And we said we were going from an infinite distance away to a distance r away. And the force is given by gmm divided by r squared. And this is dr. And our two negative signs have cancelled each other out. So now we can integrate this. When we integrate one on r squared, we end up with minus one on r. So this is equal to minus gmm times one on r, which we'll need to evaluate at the distance capital R and at infinity. So this is equal to minus gmm on capital R plus gmm on infinity. And when we divide by infinity, we're going to end up with zero for that term there, which is what we wanted because we said that we're going to define the potential energy an infinite distance away as zero. So that's why that term there is zero. So we've now got an equation to describe the potential energy at any point in space due to some mass m on some other mass little m. So this is given by u is equal to minus g m m on r. So notice it's always negative. As we get closer and closer to a body, we're losing gravitational potential energy. So if an infinite distance away, as far as we could get, it was zero, it's always going to have to be negative. Now, gravitational potential energy obeys the law of superposition. So this means that if we need to calculate the gravitational potential due to some continuous object, we'll just treat it in the normal way. We'll split it up into little increments and then we'll integrate over those increments to sum up their contributions to get that total gravitational potential energy. Now, gravitational potential energy is a scalar, whereas force is the vector. So this means that sometimes it can be easier to deal with the gravitational potential energy than the force because we do only need to consider that one component. 
Now, a fun thing we can do with our formula for gravitational potential energy is calculate the escape velocity. So the escape velocity is the velocity that an object needs to have to completely escape the gravitational pull of a planet and get to an, some infinite distance away. So let's consider a rocket which is taking off from some planet. Now initially it's going to have some speed which is given by V and initially it's got some gravitational potential energy, it's at the radius of the planet. So the initial gravitational potential energy is going to be given by minus g m m on r, where r is the radius of the planet, and it's got the initial kinetic energy which is given by a half mv squared. Now, to completely escape the pull of that planet, it needs to get to an infinite distance away. But if we're trying to work out the minimum speed it needs, then when it's at that infinite distance away, it has to get there, but it doesn't have to have any speed remaining once it's got there. So we can take its kinetic energy an infinite distance away as zero. So it comes to rest an infinite distance away. Now, an infinite distance away, the gravitational potential energy is also defined as zero. So the final potential energy and the final kinetic energy are both zero. So we've got that our initial potential energy plus our initial kinetic energy is zero, and this is given by minus gmm on r plus a half mv squared. So we've got minus gm on r plus a half v squared is equal to zero, which we can rearrange to give a half v squared is equal to gm on r, which tells us that v squared is equal to two gm on r. And so the escape velocity is given by the square root of gm on r.